any uh, questions? Um, have you heard of the Web Toppings API? Uh, I have, and I have done it in uh, Chrome, but I kind of being a bit of a naughty person in saying that since it was Mozilla people who were coming, I would avoid it since it's only in Google Chrome. And I Ah, that I did not know. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, let me pull up the same project. So, uh, I have a. Uh, Do you want to explain to people what the web timings API is? Um, the web timings API is a new spec that's coming into the browser that tells you how long everything took to load. Um, and so because it's a new spec, everyone's got their own naming convention for it. So that's why we have um, WebKit performance and so on. Um, and what it does is that it tells you exactly how long a page took to unload, then for the new page to load, and all the other timings that go with it. So if we go, when you run it, it gives you a very nice dictionary of, oh, sorry, that. Um, so, and it, so you can use it for everything. Um, and like I say, it's, it tells you when it started, uh, like when it started loading, when it started unloading, uh, and all these really nice things and gives you a nice epoch of uh, the time that it took and if there's redirections and things like that. Um, this only does it at the page level. It doesn't actually go into individual items. So um, I know there is a patch for Firefox 4, but it hasn't been landed yet. So um, when it does, hopefully it'll be in Firefox 4. Uh, yeah, does that solve, does that answer it? Yep. No, it's just yeah. One, two questions. Uh, have you looked at Mozilla's CTM project? Have you heard of that? No. Okay, that's essentially trying to do what you're doing. It was started by an intern, uh, I think last summer, and it was never finished. And the second question is, the, the GZIP stuff, is that exposed in the JSON as well? So every everything that's in the YSLOW rule set is exposed in the... Yeah. So if so we do, will it, will it give an empty value if it's not present, or will it just? Um, how would you check for it not being present? That I'm not sure yet. I haven't had enough time to play with it. I guess you could just grab the, the, grab the response. And have it yeah, you, you you would always you would have to go in and start breaking down the headers and yeah. doing all of these things. Um, if it's not there, I suspect there won't actually be any key values for it. Because it, it does come back in JSON, so I doubt it'll be there. Yes? Yeah, I think we came across CTM uh, last summer. I thought that was show slow. Yeah, it's show slow. It's CTM just kind of popped up and then got all the patterns and everything. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, any other questions? I thought I saw another hand somewhere. Uh, it's becoming a ubiquitous yeah, standard. Be well, it, oh, well, it's. Um, I think it's it's a bit too new to be used by a lot of things. This is a project that I've been working on, trying to get things going because uh, it does have a lot of things. Uh, I know Patrick Lightbody of the Browser Mob, and that he's um, he was working on a um, Java implementation and. Uh, Yari Bracken, 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 uh, who's the Ruby uh, committer in his Selenium 2, he created a Ruby version of it. And But we've all got our own quirks on how we decide what we want. Um, but between the three of us, we've all it's all fairly new stuff that we're trying to do. And um, while I say it's a spec, yeah, I would use that quite sparingly. It's there's still a number of things changing in it, quite a lot, um, at people's whim. So. Yeah, I was wondering, is 
doesn't go by the, there's a difference between the impression of the page loading and the person will see enough content to keep them going. Yep. And your page actually loading. Right? Yeah, no, it's um, th this. This is uh, what this does is it it measure it, like it captures all these things. Um, perceived speed would be would be really told by what your like why slow and page speed scores would really be because you've got to look at things like um, uh, if you've actually put CSS at the top and you've um, put your JavaScript at the bottom because then your JavaScript's not going to be blocking anything. Your CSS is actually going to render a page. And it's kind of, kind of going to look like it's there, but then other things could be there. But there's a lot of when it comes to things like this, it, it can be quite hairy when you think of um, non-modern browsers that pe a lot of people still use, uh, which only have like you know two download streams, uh, and now you've got like if you get one blocking, um, it pretty much blocks the whole page and it just goes white. Uh, then you've got to also take into um, uh, Account like things like um, the new, um, is it the font? 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 No. Yeah. Uh, web fonts, yeah. <laughs> Which um, are blocking in, in general. They just block everything uh, if you look like, if you start using it, especially in um, the non modern browsers um, that are out there. They just, they, they will try and render it, but it will. It'll block until everything's downloaded, and then try render it. Realize it can't render it, and then fall back, and then it starts getting quite scary and things like that. So, what this is trying to do is just trying to give you a dump of what's there, and then you can run your own rule sets against it. So it doesn't need to be wide slow. It doesn't need to be page speed. It can be whatever you want, and you just go right. Here's my thing. Run it, and then. If you capture this into a database uh, and you're running, say, YSLO 2 now, and YSLO 3 comes out, you've got all your data and you can update all your scores. So, you, like, if you want a comparison of, like, for the last year. So it, it gives you that opportunity as well. This is more of a reporting mechanism of the actual network traffic rather than page speed, which can be do, done separately. It might be early to ask this since I know you haven't had a lot of time yet um, to look into Hudson, but I think this is something you could build in. The plan is to build this into continuous integration so that when a developer checks in new files, new JS files, new CSS, whatever, yeah, yeah, you get a, a regression range, much like the, the Firefox team does a yeah. bunch of page, page load tests and loading tests and stuff. Yeah, yeah, well, that, that's the idea. But it's a, you know, and it's a general idea that we can just use this and just. For not not just like for our smoke tests, but like for anyone's smoke tests, and it can be easily translated because it's Selenium 2 has all the goodness of it'll work once all of the bindings are up to date. It'll work in all four languages quite easily, and it's the same concept. You just go do this, do this, do this, and it's done, and you'll get the same idea. Uh, well, in, in this sense, like it, I rely on Firefox because I can actually get the proper traffic. Um, I've not seen any other browsers where I would be able to do this without a lot of extra efforts. Where a lot of, in this case, a lot of the effort was done for me, and then I've just merged a number of technologies together and gone, "Yes, this will work. It's pretty." <laughs> Thank you, everyone.